Darwinian evolution works as uh, functional advantages are preserved and then passed on to the next generation. Uh, but if there's no function, there's nothing to preserve, nothing to pass on, and those intermediate stages would, would not, would not uh, be viable. Now, Steve, how have the Darwinists responded to irreducible complexity? Have they given any robust answer that can be demonstrated to be true? Well, they've posited the existence of a, of a precursor system called the Type 3 secretory system. And it's a, it's a um, little syringe-like device that in an ordinary flagellar motor uh, it sits on the inside of it and then the other parts are built around it. But in some uh, uh, bacterial systems, you have the, uh, the Type 3 secretory system existing on its own without the rest of the parts. And so the thesis is that that type three secretory system, the little syringe or needle was the precursor. And it's got, uh, Scott could tell you exactly, but I think it's 10 to 12 proteins in most systems, but you got to get to a 30, uh, a 30 protein system in the flagellar motor. So if you take what Scott just said, and you think about the 29 part, the 28 part, the 27, 26, 25, 24, 23 part version of that flagellar system, None of those, inner, those uh, alleged or hypothesized um, intermediates form any function whatsoever. And mm. so the, the, there's a huge difficulty in getting from a type 3 secretory system, even if it is the precursor, to the, the fully formed flagellar motor because those intermediate stages, again, have no function. And yet Darwinian, uh, uh, Darwinian evolution works as... Uh, functional advantages are preserved and then passed on to the next generation. Uh, but if there's no function, there's nothing to preserve, nothing to pass on, and those intermediate stages would, would not, would not uh, be viable. So there's still a huge gap. But beyond that, we've learned something really important from uh, what are called mutation density studies and, and some other lines of evidence, and namely, n namely that that little syringe-like device seems to be a devolutionary breakdown product of the complete flagellar motor. In other words, the flagellar system as a whole, when it's found in isolation, is much, the genes in the, that make up the parts for that system are older, not younger, than the genes that we find that make the type 3 secretory system when it's found in isolation. So either the type 3 is a, 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 uh, an independent system or it's something that is, uh, has devolved from the more complex aboriginal system. And, Scott is, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead, go ahead, complete the thought. Yeah, so in thought. any case, it, it, it's not the precursor, and therefore uh -huh. this, uh, this hypothesized or proposed uh, scenario in which the flagellar motor built up gradually from this simpler system is not, is not credible uh, in terms of molecular genetics or theoretically when you think about what would be needed to get from that system to the whole flagellar motor.